welcome to church. You are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome to church. This is Christ, eternal life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for you, our Father, our God, our rock. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. Here we are, our God, that you speak to us. You anoint us, you increase us more and more in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Today, I have a message entitled, Possessing God's Anointing to Serve. Possessing God's Anointing to Serve. God's Power. It is God's Spirit to Serve. Possessing God's Anointing to Serve. Possessing God's Presence to Serve. Possessing God's Presence to be useful to God in all aspects of life. Physical, spiritual, ministry. Possessing God's Anointing to Serve. To be useful, to be powerful. God's anointing that will help you. Actually, you need God's anointing even to be able to make waves, even to do good, good things in life. You need to possess this anointing and it's going to help us. In the name of Jesus, God will possess us with his anointing, with his power, with his grace, with his glory, to be able to be useful unto God in all areas of life. It is the will of God. God created the heavens and the earth. He created the earth to be inhabited by man. He didn't create the heart to, to, to he didn't create the heart for man to just come there in vain. He created the earth so that we can be blessings unto our community, our state, our nation, and the whole world. He created the heavens and the earth by his great power. And that is the reason why I want to tell you that God's anointing to be useful to him is important. And you need to have this anointing upon your life. This power upon your life. Look at the areas. God will be using people. In so many areas, God wants to use you. God wants to make use of you in life, in ministry, even in the family. In every area. In every area. Are you desiring for God's anointing? Are you desiring for God's grace? Are you desiring for God's power? Are you desiring to be used of the Lord? Are you desiring that? God is able to help you, to really help you out. God wants to help you. Look at the situation in Exodus 35. Exodus 35, concerning a man, Bessalel, from verse 30. Exodus 35, from verse 30, I read, And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See the Lord as called by name Bessalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, and of the tribe of Judah. God called this man from the tribe of Judah the son of Hor, by name, Bessalil. He called him. Where, 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 where did he call him? What has, what has God given to him for him to be useful, for him to be impactful, for God to use him all over the whole country? Look at verse 30, 31. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God. May God's Spirit fill your life. May God's presence fill your life. May God's Holy Spirit be upon you. May you be endowed with the spirit of the living God for usefulness in life. Now, verse 2, verse 31. It says, And they are filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. You need wisdom to be able to run the church. God's wisdom, not to scatter the work of God. God's wisdom to run the home. God's wisdom to live among people. God's wisdom to be useful, to be faithful. He said, He has fill him with the spirit of wisdom. Not only wisdom, in understanding. God gave him understanding. May we receive understanding. And in knowledge. God gave him knowledge. We need God's knowledge to run the work. We need God's knowledge to move. We need God's knowledge to overcome Satan and his antics. We need God's knowledge so that we become impactful unto God's kingdom. And in all manner of workmanship, crafts, God gave him wisdom. God gave him knowledge. God gave him understanding to be able to use his hands, to be able to, 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 to write good things. He gave him this one. Oh, Bessali alone had so many blessings from God so as to be useful. God's anointing. Don't forget, possessing God's anointing to serve. Verse 32. And to devise curious works to work on gold and on silver 
and he brass. That's it. God gave this to him. He could carve things out. He, he was a sculpture man. He could do designs. What are you doing in the church? God has given you something to offer to the kingdom of God. Even to offer to the community. Look at this man. You don't complain you don't have money. Don't complain you don't have anything to do. You, God has given you talents. You can cry to him. Like this man, Bessalil, God bestowed upon him wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and to rot works on brass, on gold, on so many things, to carve things. The three, and the cutting of stones. He was able to cut stones and make, uh, and be able to make images with the stone, not only that, to set them. That is building a house. He was a professional. God bestowed this upon him to be useful. That is, that is he, he knew how to carve. He also knew how to set. And when you get to the work of Bessali, they were in order. You could, you fancy it. You want to, to always look at it. Beautiful things. Beautiful productions. God has his power. Yeah, now God has given us so many things. Let our eyes be open to see them. The things God gave to us for us to be useful, to be blessed in life, to be a blessing. Like Abraham, God spoke to him, I will bless you, I will make you great in the nation, and also make you, he said, I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, and I will make you a blessing. Bessalil was a blessing to his nation, to his family, to his community. It was a blessing. The gifts in you are there. Don't begin to cross carpet, going using other gifts of other people. No! God, God has bestowed upon you your own personal gifts that will make you up. Look at Joseph. He had the gift of interpretation of dream. And he used this judiciously. God raised him up, even from prison to palace. God is going to raise you up now. How are you making use of your gifts? God is just calling us. He's anointing upon us so that we can become useful unto the world and unto to God. To bless you, to bless your work. Now, that verse 3 says, and the cutting of stones to set them, that is in order. And both he and Haholiab, the son of High Samak, of the tribe of Dan, of Dan, them as he filled with wisdom of art. May you receive wisdom instead of fighting about. Why can't you ask for wisdom? Why can't you ask for what God wants to use you for? And the way, the gifts that he will use in your life. To steer up your life, to steer up the work of God, and to make the work of God better. Now, he said, 35, to work on man of work, of the engraver, and of the cunning workman, and of the embroiderer in blue, and in purple, in scarlet, and in fine linen, then, and of the weaver, even of them that do any work, and those that devise cunning works. Now, Aholiab was under man. Basali, very serious. God bestowed upon him gifts. Aholiab too. They will not lack. The gifts of a man make way for him or make room for him. God bestowed these gifts on them. God has bestowed some gifts on you. Maybe you have not seen them. But I pray now that your gifts will begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, look at Isaiah chapter 45. There are certain things there concerning King Cyrus. God helped him. God helped him. God can use anything, anybody. If you can yield yourself to him, if you can obey him, look at uh, Isaiah 45 from verse 1. He said, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him. God held the hand of Cyrus, King Cyrus, to use him. God is holding your hand now to use you for his work. God is anointing your hand, your tongue, your body parts to use him, to use the parts for God. Even where, where you step, the anointing of God is upon that place and God will wrought miracles in that place. Even your shadow. You say, whose hand I've held. Let me repeat that verse one. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I've held, to subdue nations before him and, to, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut again. I say to you, 
the gates of goodness shall not be shut against you. In the name of Jesus. Verse 2. I'll go before thee and make thee the crooked places straight. So be courageous. Be confident. God is saying to you, even as he said to Cyrus the king, he said, I will go before you. When God goes before you, the roads are opened. I will go before you. God wants to go before you every day of this year. Even throughout your life, God wants to go before you. God wants to go before you. I will go before thee and make the crooked place place it straight, and we break in pieces the gates of brass, and cut it under the brass of iron. That is God. That is God. He is going to make way, because he has bestowed upon you some gifts, as he gave to Beth Salil and Aholiab. He gave them, and they were very useful. They were very useful in the nation. Before Moses, they were very, very useful. They were very, very useful. He said, and I'll give thee the treasures of darkness. Look at the blessings there. Because God has bestowed upon them gifts, and he also said, he will, he will give them the treasures of darkness. Treasures of darkness. The, the treasures you, 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 you have not seen. He, he said he would direct them. He will give to them. He said, I give them the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou may know that I am the Lord who call thee by thy name. I am God of Israel. This is God. He wants to give you the treasures of darkness. He wants to change your situations. Because he's a faithful God. Praise the Lord. Now, that is the reason why I said to you, God is taking you somewhere, and you have to get there. You have to get there. God called Jeremiah. When God called him, he, he told him some things. He said, well, I've called you. I will make you so-so-so. And, uh, you know, he was just complaining. That was just a little kid, and now can you be able to go for the Lord? When God called him, when God calls, he empowers, he keeps. That is God. When God calls a man, he gives him what he will use. He gave Joseph interpretation of dream. He, just, he gave Joseph administration, good administration. He was able to do good administration, even in the land of Egypt. He was able to manage two nations together. That is the nation of Israel and the nation of Egypt because he gave him administration and he, he prospered. You will prosper. From today, in the name of Jesus, as he called Jeremiah, you know what happened to Jeremiah? In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. He said, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the, in the belly or in the womb, I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I did thee a prophet unto the nations. What has God called you to do? God is calling you to be useful unto him. Now, verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all people, all that I send thee. And whatever, whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Verse 9 and verse 10. Very profound. What are there? What are the things there? Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. God will touch your mouth. God will touch your eyes. God will touch your ears. God will touch your leg. God will touch your hands. And they are useful unto God. Unto God. I touched my mouth and said, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth. Now, see, I have this day set thee over nations, over the kingdoms. That is, he raised him up. God is raising you up too. He said, over the kingdoms. To do what? He said, to root out. Number one, six things God gave to him. The authority of the world, the power of the world, the spirit of the world. And he gave to him to root out. Not only that, and to pull down. Not only that, and to destroy. And to throw down anything negative. When he, when he commanded, it will be done. And I command today, whatever the devil has planted in your life, I will put such in the name of Jesus. God gave to Jeremiah this anointing, this grace. Now, not only that, even to build and to plant, to build the church, to plant good things in people's life, to build up the people in the way of the Lord. Now, what are the things needed? For you to really be useful. The following are some of the purposes of the anointing. When the anointing is upon you, the grace of God is upon you, now you begin to operate in a supernatural way. You, you come out of being natural to supernatural, being ordinary to extraordinary. You come out because you are his instrument of use. You are his battle axe. Now, number one, the anointing gives you the grace to serve God as a chosen vessel, it gives you the grace. And you can see that in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all manners of sicknesses and diseases from people. For God was with him. May God be with you in the name of Jesus. Number two, the anointing sets a man apart, consecrates for 
only work in the world. The anointing will do that. Number three, as like Bessalil or Holiab, the anointing will release on you divine wisdom, divine knowledge, divine understanding. You will excel professionally. I say to you, you will excel. Your children will excel. Your ministry will excel because the anointing will give to you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Number four, there's no power. There, there's the power of the Holy Spirit to convince sinners and win them to the path of eternal life. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. You speak to sinners, and sinners are converted to God because the anointing is upon you. The anointing will help you to do that. Number five, the anointing empowers you to cancel people in the will of God. You give the right cancer. You not mislead people. As for this anointing to serve, don't mislead people. Many people have been misled and have gone astray. They are weeping. They are sorrowing now because they've gone wrong to places that should not go. The Holy Spirit in you will cancel right. Number six, endows you with the kingly attributes. We are in you exercise authority over situations to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to plant and to build. That is the work of the anointing. It helps you to grow and develop. Number seven, the priesthood anointing is released on a person for special duties, such as preaching, teaching, praying, and for special duties. Number eight, for deliverance, for this, it is a, the anointing defends the, in the time of trouble or crisis. The anointing will defend you in the time of crisis, troubles. The word of God says, touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. Nobody will do you harm. Even when they come, they go, they, 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 they will mess up themselves because God is at your side. God is backing you up. God is before you. He's going before you. He has made the cooker way to be made straight. The anointing will defend you. And number nine, the anointing allows one to rule in the midst of the enemy. The, you rule in the midst of the enemy. And lastly, say lastly, the anointing promotes. You are promoted. You move from that level you are to another level. Even greater level. In the name of Jesus, anointing promotes. And that's the saying, holiness is important. Be holy unto the Lord. Walk in the will of God. Walk in the will of God. Walk according to the scripture. Follow the will of God. For anointing of God to be to rest upon you and be useful unto God. This is the will of God. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Just only one single prayer point. As you continue to pray and pray and pray. Lord, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. And the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Not only that, what you want me to be used, where you want me to be useful, help me. Let the anointing begin to flow from today. I want to be praying to you. Help me, O God. Prayer in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let us pray. Our Father, be glorified. We ask for the anointing. You yourself bestowed upon Bessalil the grace, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, and to walk curious acts in, in acts. And you did help him. And Ahuliab, you also helped him. Did it matter to you sent him? Even when he didn't know what to do, you helped him and you lifted him up. You encouraged him. We ask for your encouragement, for lifting, for promotion, that through the anointing, we get to walk well in the name of Jesus. And it is well with you. From today, if you are leaking, come out of leakage now. You are no more leaking. You are no more lukewarm. You are no more tired. You are no more empty. You are filled with fire and power of the living God. In the name of Jesus, and it is well with us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you.